Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint an oriental poppy. We're going to show you start from start to finish how to paint it. And I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's watching chat for our live show. So if you have questions, you can ask those while I'm painting and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, so here's our reference photo. I'm using a 10 by 10 inch uh, canvas. This is the Pro Series Dixie 12 inch or 12 ounce Dixie uh, canvas, 10 and 10 by 10 inch from Fredericks, um, and I have coated it with a coat of light orange just to start out to give us kind of a glow base for underneath our flowers. Figured that would be a good color. Um, for our background, we're going to do a number six angle bright for some of the black um, that we'll be putting around the flower. And then we're going to need a three eighths inch and quarter inch angle brush for most of the detail work in the flower. I've got a three eighths inch and quarter inch Willis blender in case we want to uh, put in some texture on the uh, petals. And then I've got a number four and a number one round for some of the center detail. So really whatever brushes that you've got. But these are um, Princeton uh, Velvet Touch. Really like them and uh, they're available at the Brush Guys. I've got all of the information about the brushes and the canvases and materials that I'm using down in the description. So thank you to Fredericks and Princeton, our brush and canvas sponsors for providing our materials today. I'll also be using a Faber-Castell watercolor pencil <clears throat> for the drawing on my canvas. Let me go over the colors really quick. I've got Quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow or cadmium red light, quinacridone burnt orange, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, phthalo green yellow shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, burnt sienna, burnt umber, carbon black, titanium white, unbleached titanium, and this is a uh, glazing liquid. And this is more of our background color, the um, light orange. So. <clears throat> I'm going to start out by getting a little bit of water. I'm going to move my water thing so it's a little bit more on the picture. Get a little bit of water on my largest angle brush. This is a 3 8 inch angle. And you're going to want to um, paper towels and water, uh, a water bottle um, to spray your paints with every now and then to keep them moist especially if you're in a humid area. So I get a lot of questions about how I keep my paints wet. And um, some of it has to do with the way I pull the paint from the paint puddles. So when I'm starting here, I'm going to pull it from the side and just keep pulling it from that same corner. And then I do my mixing off in another area. So I'm not mixing right up close to uh, where the paint is. And it'll keep this back area back here. Um, will kind of keep the, the whole puddle of the paint sort of fresher if we don't mix dip right straight into the middle if I was dipping into the middle of the puddle of paint it would start to dry out that middle part a little bit faster so um, that's kind of there's really no secret recipe but I think that helps because <laughs> they do dry out fast so I, I, I feel your pain <laughs> All right, so there's our main color here. We're kind of mixing just a little bit of quinacridone magenta in with our cadmium red light to get this kind of really pretty watermelon red color. And then I've added a little bit of white so you can see that tone, but that's kind of our color that we're gonna go for for our poppy. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start in here. Oh, wait, I forgot to show you how to, how to draw it. I guess I need to do that, huh? Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just so excited about painting this today. <clears throat> what? I did. I did. Okay. So what I did when I was figuring out the um, puppy, I looked at the center and kind of tried to figure out, okay, so on my reference photo, the center is not quite um, centered. So if you kind of split your canvas down the middle, you can see that center of the flower is kind of just off to the side. So I kind of did that with my um, pencil same way and then just kind of figured out where that center was and tried to make it about the same size as I'm seeing here um, in my reference 
um, if you want to grid it, you can do that. Um, I would suggest, you know, if you're new to drawing, that that's a great way of of um, helping along your drawing skills. Um, it's not cheating. It's <laughs> it's just kind of helping you keep your things all lined up. So you would grid this, and then you would grid your canvas, and make sure that the grid is um, the same. Um, so if you um, if you have your drawing here, you do 10 squares across, and then you do 10 squares across this way so that you have the equal number of squares. And um, then it doesn't really matter how big you make them as long as they're the same, you know, size on your canvas to one another. You can scale it up however you want. I don't know. You know how to grade. I don't know why I'm explaining that. <laughs> it's not a new, not a new thing. <laughs> There's even grid tools online that you can buy, um, or not buy, but um, go and, and download your photos too. So, all right, so there's a little uh, black part that's going to be right in here, and I kind of went ahead and did that. And right here, and I kind of made a, a rough circle around the center part because there's going to be um, kind of those little purpley, um, purple things coming out and little yellow flowers there so I kind of figured out how big that was going to be and then I just started kind of doing my petals around and I just start at one side and kind of work my way around so uh, working closest to the center there and tried to look at how close to the sides and how wide on the canvas the petals are going to be so you know just trying to figure out okay this is uh, about the about the same width as this to this and kind of do that on here um, visually like I, I just I don't know it's hard to explain how I draw but it's weird but it works for me so that's you have to dive deep into that art brain I, I think so yeah so kind of straight straight line out wiggle 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 out this way kind of skims the edge there comes in and then curves back around and um, one of the things that might be helpful is just to remember that all of these petal edges are going to be coming and um, meeting up in the center here so um, when you're doing this um, like even though this one is pointing out this way this part here is the part that's going to be going and pointing into this uh, center so um, they all are meeting back up in the same spot and if you remember to do that then you won't get your petals kind of um, going off I see people do stuff like you know they they bring their petals out and then they leave it out here instead of pointing it in towards the center um, so all of these petals have to kind of lead towards the middle part here and then they can wiggle out here and do whatever they want to but they've all got kind of a base to go back to so this is going to wiggle out this way, up almost to the top of the canvas. Comes back down, back up, back down, and circles around, and then points right straight back into this, right in here. Okay. And then this one folds in on itself, and it's got a fold that kind of comes in like that, and it actually folds in like that and comes down. <clears throat> cuts off right there and this one actually comes out a little bit more right there and we're seeing the underside or the top of it there okay that looks about right and there's another one that's poking in right back here that's peeking out and comes back around and then there's one tucked in right here that comes out Wiggle, wiggle, comes around, and then it curves back in on itself right here, and then it wiggles back down and then curves back up this way. It continues around, wiggling back and forth. Back in here, and that one's pointing towards that edge right there. All right, and then this one is actually, I think it goes behind this petal. This, I think this petal comes in front right there. 
<clears throat> and then right here where this one came out like that, there's a straight line right here that's showing the backside of that petal, the underside tucked in there. Right, and then there is another petal that is, so all this is pointing in this way, right? Then there's another one that comes out this way, comes back in, comes back out towards the center, and then wiggles out this way. And then we're seeing the back end of it curving around like that. And then there's a little bit of one peeking in right here. It goes like that. And then another one right here that's kind of around the outside. And I just pick an edge and follow that edge and look at the look at the line on here and just kind of try to look at the line and not the overall shape. It's it's easy to get kind of lost in there, but if you just kind of block everything else out and just focus on that line right there as you're trying to draw it. And then every now and then check to see if it's if these spaces are correct. So um, this is going to be really close to this petal here. So I want to either widen out this petal or make this one a little bit bigger right here so that it's going to almost touch each other right there. Right, and then keep on wiggling it, wiggle, wiggle, out this way. And I can't, it's hard to tell. I think that there's a petal. I think there's, this one comes in like this. I think this one ends. Comes out like that. And then you're seeing the back, the, the kind of leading tip of it right there. Right, and then this one does a V-shape right here. <clears throat> and I think we already did this one that kind of tucks in right here. So we're just going to go right over that right here. Is that my stomach? It's loud. jelly sandwich you made me yeah hey uh, they want somebody right wants here. to know Wiggle. okay if they can start with an all black canvas yeah you can i almost did i i thought about it but i decided not to just because um i just thought it might be a little bit more difficult to cover over since we, this color is so vibrant and it's fairly light so i just thought it would take several coats to cover it and i just thought it might be faster just to paint around it but yeah you can totally do that if that's your preference for sure okay so this one kind of does this long sweeping thing right here like that and then it just wiggles almost straight like that okay and there's a little bit of black there and that's pretty much it i think we got all the way around it i mean i think maybe and this one comes out like that and curves back in and out of itself out back in Wiggle. The nice thing about these flowers is, you know, as long as you get these pointing in the right direction, the little, you know, the little wrinkles and, and ridges and stuff is not as important. It's just kind of getting the basic shapes right. So everything looks about right, I think, per proportionally there. And my paint is dry now. Just a lot of poking and peeking and wiggling going on with those. Yeah. Pretty much. Petals. I never <laughs> knew flowers did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what color is your nail polish? It's a must-have. Oh, no. Um, it's, you can have to look it up. I don't know. <sighs> I didn't pay attention. You know better. I did. Last time I painted my nails, I remembered to look, look at it, and then nobody asked about it, so I just... <laughs> So which one of these? That one, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me clean that out because I got that paint kind of up high. I went ahead and mixed a bunch of it with Quinacridone Magenta and Cadmium Red Light. It is Pocket Aces. <laughs> <laughs> Revlon kind of, 130. It is kind of a disappointing name, actually. It should be like Poppies Forever. <laughs> All right, adding a little bit of white. 
can see how the white really changes that tone, kind of softens it quite a bit, makes it closer to the color that we want. There we go. And we're just going to start filling in our shapes. And I've got that angle brush, the 3 8 inch angle brush. And as I'm filling it in, I'm going to be going along the direction of the petals growth. So that if we have streaks and things, it looks like we meant to do that. We don't have to go back in and fix anything later. So the petals are going to grow from, you know, the center out. So they're going to radiate out. And that's a good tip here where you saw where I kind of started that, um, that red. And I knew I was going to have to stop and come back to it. I don't know if, if you noticed what I did there is I... Um, I feathered out the edges so that I didn't have any hard lines to cover. So if you'll do that, then um, it's a lot easier to go back in and blend over the top than if I had ended with a really solid straight line. So I'm just going to use this tip here. And I'm using a little bit lighter color around the top of the petals, closer to the edge there. So we can say hi and welcome to everybody. Yeah. Guys, hope you are having a great Saturday. Thanks for joining us. I know it's our live shows are getting smaller and smaller as the <laughs> weather gets nicer. We lose yep. people to gardening and <laughs> outdoor activities. To other so weekend activities. We appreciate you stopping and spending time with us today. I know you've got other things to do, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get a little bit of the glazing liquid just to make it a little easier. I'm going with a little bit of the unbleached titanium here. So, yeah, we're, uh, hope you're, we've got our grandbaby coming. So, from now on, poor Jordan and Court, Courtney, it, nobody's going to be caring whether they're with them or not. We're not, not <laughs> yes, Liam so, and Liam, his, his parents are coming today. Right, exactly. Yeah, the parents. <laughs> I've been telling everybody our grand grandbaby's here. Poor Courtney, you know. <laughs> All my grandson's saying, "Where? Well, his mom's coming too." But yeah, the <laughs> 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 poor Courtney. <laughs> I love, I love, uh, I love that they're going to get to stay with us. I'm super excited about it, and I'm going to get absolutely no work done while he's here. I'm sure. So. All right, getting white done here. He's only four months old, so if you can imagine the level of cuteness there, it's pretty high. It's pretty high. He's starting to grab toys, and it's a pretty adorable. Unlike, <laughs> unlike me, which is like over 600 months old, <laughs> the level of cuteness really isn't there. That, no, it lowers as it each year. It lowers, unfortunately. Oh, well, thanks for agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah. If I just sit there and punch myself in the face, people look at me strange, but it's cute when Liam does it. <laughs> I don't understand it, but okay. When you try to grab your, eat your toes. Exactly. <laughs> Sitting in a meeting at work. Right. You know, just randomly do stuff like that. People are like, what's <laughs> going on, Mark? <laughs> Reminds me of that baby, adult baby guy. This is get in Saturday Night Live. <laughs> the businessman, baby. <laughs> 
Yep. So anyhow, we're excited to have, we'll have a new cat joining us too. So Cashmere's going to be in for a rude awakening. They're bringing their cat, so. And dog. And dog, yeah. Well, she already made peace with the dog, but she yeah. hasn't met the cat yet, so. The, it'll be interesting. We'll see. And then our other cats just, <laughs> we got to keep them away from everybody. Yeah, Oliver's not even going to be able to be in the house all month. He's just not even, he's definitely not a friendly cat, friendly to other cats. Or animals of any kind. He runs off grown dogs from our yard. He is like an attack cat. We have a video of him that my boys think is hilarious. I feel really bad for this poor puppy. The little fluffball dog coming to see us. You know, he was our neighbor's dog. Oliver ripped into that poor puppy, and he made the <laughs> squeakiest sound as he's running away, and they think it's hilarious. They play it over and over again. <laughs> 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 it's like that cat's not nice. <laughs> Poor dog. He didn't yeah. know what he was up to. You know, I was yeah. just trying to protect us. But poor dog. Oh my goodness. All right. So just going through here and filling in, and I'm really trying to get it fairly close to the right values as I'm filling it in. So, all that to say, Oliver is banned from the house. <laughs> Poor Oliver. <clears throat> so, this may, may be our last video on the Ooh. old computer. Ooh. Dramatic pause there. I know. It's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, depends on how well the video, uh, the switchover goes. That's true. <laughs> like maybe That's true. Left. <laughs> <laughs> yep, we're getting a new computer here. I'm going to try some of this burnt orange. Just see what that looks like with some white in it. That's pretty close to what I'd like to, so let's go ahead and put some of that in here. Just for something different. And this color is not quite light enough. It's going to need to be quite a lot lighter, but we'll add. I mean, right now we're just kind of trying to get the background covered. And if you want to leave a little bit of that orange showing through, you can. Right, just cover up your and every now and then get a little bit of that glazing liquid just to make it easier for this paint to flow it just kind of improves the flow of this heavy body acrylic Get a little bit darker color right here in that crease, right in the back side right there. And this front edge is light. Come around right there and then there's another dark part right here. Mm 
just using the little bit of white on the tip of my brush there to kind of brush in and then I'm going to pull it down from that edge a little bit blend it in what are you humming about over there no just about your painting oh what about it you're doing all right thanks I posted in the Facebook group that you promised that this would be less than six hours today. <laughs> so I'm going to hold you to your promise. Yeah, it definitely. Less than six. Yep. Yeah, I think I can handle that. I don't, I'm going to try to keep it to around two hours. We'll see. I, that's, that was my goal. So I'm, I'm working pretty fast today. And you had a lot of pre-stuff done, so... Yeah, it helps if you draw it out first. That's, you know, that took me about 20 minutes or so. And you really can't see the numbers you know, <laughs> you know, everywhere, so... Right. Yeah. yeah, I kind of blended those out. The paint by numbers. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, maybe someday my paintings will be on paint by numbers. That's a goal. To aspire to, isn't it? <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. That would be. That'd be pretty cool. That's how I started painting. So that would be a very uh, full circle. <laughs> Come full circle. <laughs> I think that's one of my first. Well, actually, my first memory of painting, I remember very vividly, and it's probably one of my first ever memories that are that is very solid memory was preschool and uh, I was probably four or five and th we were painting and we had easels set up and I I um, was so into what I was doing and did not want to stop and they made me stop and I just remember being so like just wanting to get back to doing that some more you know and just that feeling and uh, yeah so now I get to do it as much as I want. It's nice. <laughs> well, sort of as much as I want. I do have to do the dishes every now and then. Although um, I don't think I did them at all this week. So <laughs> <laughs> I've really never experienced anything like that. Really? Outside of holding your hand or something. But What? Just remembering not want to stop. Oh, you're so sweet. Doing something, you know. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they took they took the the brush away. I wasn't finished. That was my deal. I mean, I was still working on it, and they took it all. You know, they took it away. And we didn't get to do that quite as much as I would have liked to. I'm sure because it was a mess, and you know, I mean, now as an adult, I understand why. But I just thought it was like torture. Like why? Will you not let us do the painting thing again? Well, now I know why you're not good at math. Why? you're daydreaming about getting back to painting the exactly. whole time. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I think it was, I don't know. Well, I like to draw a lot, so I drew all the time. But then I think I was... Eight or nine, maybe, something like that. Well, probably a little older because it was in, I remember the house we were in, so it was probably 10. And got a paint by number kit and was doing that. And again, sad when that was over, you know. And I watched Bob Ross avidly, avidly, just all the time, as much as I could. And that's even like getting up early to watch him, which is a lot for me. So, <laughs> says a lot. All right, going in with the lighter colors here. I'm just looking at my picture, just trying to see these areas where the light's hitting it, where these darker areas are, going in with the darker colors there, and then um, getting the lighter colors in where they are showing up. So, and just trying to kind of smooth out any of the transitions between the colors right now just kind of keeping it fairly smooth and so if I want a darker area I can go in with that really dark right where I want it darkest and then 
wipe that off kind of over here. Grab some of the lighter color that's above it and pull that down over the top and blend them together a little bit like that. So that's as, as I'm talking about Bob Ross. I'm doing this stuff. Sorry, I'm talking about cats and Bob Ross. <laughs> I do tend to talk about random stuff when we do these fl the large flowers because there's a lot of repetitive stuff. I mean, it's it's not like, you know, so I have a lot of time to, my mind to wander into random subjects. <laughs> but that's the nice thing about painting. It kind of gets you out of your, you know, worries and things and kind of takes your mind off things. and Escape for a little while. Yeah, it is. It's, it really is. Actually, this kind of is folded over a little closer to over here. So I'm going to move that fold over and make this petal a little bit bigger right here. There we go. Start the fold right there. And if your paints are getting sticky, just let them set. We can always go back in and and uh, give it a second coat. So don't uh, don't try to continue blending when your paint's starting to dry because it'll lift off your canvas. You've seen that happen if you've watched any of my videos before. <laughs> I I do it from time to time. If you go back to an area where it's, you know, you don't realize it's still wet and drying, or still not completely dry. I get impatient. All right, so now going into the next level of paint, of petals here, and just doing the same thing. The main thing here I'm going to try to do is make sure that I've got a good contrast between the petals that I've already done and the new petals so I don't have to lose, so I don't lose my lines. So as I'm doing my new ones, I'm wanting to make sure that I'm getting good contrast here, especially just like right along those edges. a pretty color. I love this coral color. This is, I guess this, what was the other thing that we did recently that had this coral color? It was that sunset, the ocean sunset. This is like the color, the Pantone color of the years, coral. So this is very trendy right now. I should put that in my description. Well, that's us. We're very hip and trendy people. Right, right. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, the beach had some of that color in it. Yeah. Did the hanging flowers have any of it in there? Or the galaxy mm -hmm. mountain? Uh, no. Not the elephant, for sure. No. Colorful ocean sunset. That one did. Eiffel Tower. Easy Cherry Blossoms. Yeah, that one had some of it too. That's all I see recently that may okay. have had it. I just remember mentioning it again, like at one of the <sighs> other videos recently. There's no telling. I'm lucky if I can remember what I painted last week. So <laughs> that's 
So I'm picking right now if you are interested in helping me decide what I'm gonna, what we're going to be painting in in May. I've got a poll going right now in my Thinkful Art group, picking some of the paintings that I'm thinking about doing next month. I always like to get feedback. I've got it's it never fails. It's like the things that I think are going to be popular are like not, and then things like surprising things like. I don't know, you know, it's just, it's just interesting. So I'm always enjoy getting feedback from folks. And I do get, um, requests for paintings from time to time. And if, if you've requested, you can, you know, I, I do enjoy getting photos too, but I don't necessarily guarantee that they're actually going to get painted. So, so <laughs> sorry if you've sent me pictures and I haven't, it's, Nothing personal. I just have so many different things running around all the time. I, I never seem to get to all of them. Hopefully, maybe one day we'll get to everything that we want to paint. But so many fun things, so many cool ideas, so little time. And we're even doing two a week, and we still, I still can't get to all the ideas that I have to paint. Because <laughs> it's a good problem to have. <laughs> all right <clears throat> my stomach is making all kinds of noises you hear that <laughs> It's like all kinds of noises. What the deal today? It's just singing. It's so happy having that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I know. It's like so weird. So I was going in with the really dark right in our shadow areas, almost that full bright color, and I'll probably even darken it up even more to really emphasize it. That contrast is what gives your paintings depth. So you really don't be afraid of going really, really dark and really bright on your highlights. And that's one of the things that... Um, like if you if you get your painting done and you feel like it's not quite done but you're not exactly sure what to do to get it there um one of the things i almost always always suggest is to just punch up the dark and light values so go back in and add brighten your highlights and darken your darks your shadows and that usually is uh the thing that'll kind of help make it look finished. This one is kind of curving in like this and down. It's kind of sweeping down this way and then curving in and pointing towards the center here. This area here is getting some light, so it's quite light right here. doing hun you're so quiet all of a sudden it's really quiet over there must be answering questions no I'm trying to figure out why my nose is still so stuffed up <laughs> well, 
Hopefully you don't have a cold. No, it's just allergies. But I'm over here just being a mouth breather. Yeah, well, I'm a mouth breather all the time. It's hard. I get comments about that. I pretty much sound like Darth Vader on the videos, a lot of them. Especially the older ones when I was using that lav mic. So, yeah. It's like right two inches from my mouth. It's just... I did, I did a Facebook Live video you know, once <coughs> a couple of years ago leading into one of the live uh -huh. videos here, and I was using that microphone. Yeah. And everybody's like, Mark, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and it too close to my mouth. I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just got back from running a marathon. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but it's a beautiful day out there. We've got the, uh, the Baltimore Orioles and the, Gross beaks are yep. passing through on their migration, so they're stopping by eating. They're so pretty. Mm -hmm. Last year I got a good video of the Baltimore Orioles fighting over the oranges. Would there probably be, how many of them were? I mean, in that video, there oh, were a lot of them. a bunch, yeah. And there was one that was like, he, he was guarding his orange, <laughs> and he had his feathers out, and he was doing this head bobbing thing like, come at me, bro, come on. <laughs> you think you can take me? It was so funny. Oh, my gosh. He, he was taking on all comers and yep. guarding that orange. It was so cute. So we enjoy them as they pass through. They're only here yeah, for a week or two, long. and then they keep on moving. Yep. But at least they come back over here. Yep. That's good. We got hummingbirds already. Yep. We saw some of those out there fighting last night. Okay, so this little area is kind of tricky because it's dark right here, but then the top edge is light, so I'm going to kind of darken up and just leave that that almost like a little outline right there on that edge. There, and then this is really dark in here. In fact, I'm going to get some purple, a little bit of black, and do that in right there. Wipe that off. Get some of our darkest color there and just kind of tap over that edge to blend it in. Wipe it off. And I'm just going to use the kind of damp brush and just sort of mop. <clears throat> All right, so there's a little bit of kind of a medium color right in here. I'm trying to close up all of the gaps in the flowers too. So make sure that you're touching, you know, and filling in all these spaces between the petals. Unless you want that orange to show through. And I've seen that. Like if I'd done a darker color, I could have probably, if maybe if I'd painted the background like this dark red or something like that, then I could probably have left some of that red showing between the petals, but in this case, I'm, I'm wanting to close it up. And this is all going to be dark red in here. And 
there's going to be some of that. I'm going to go ahead and just go over the top of that center part just a little bit. So just to make sure that there's not like a ring around our center. A little bit. So I want to blend these two together. So I'm going to get some of that kind of a medium color here and just kind of go back over and pull it up into that lighter color right there. And you can get some glazing liquid if that helps. And then right here, there is some of the lighter color. Comes down and comes out over the top. And I'm just gonna get some white on the very tip of the brush. And just use the white here, just kinda run it along that edge. So I'm just going to curve it out like that. All right, and then there's this area here. It's light. So let's go ahead and go back in here with some of this lighter color. quickly. We'll definitely only have to go back through here and add some brighter highlights to certain areas, but I think we're getting the color pretty close to where we want it to be. some glazing liquid there just to kind of tap it in to my flower and then right up underneath here you mix up some more of the base color Pulling down toward the center. Always angling that brush in towards the center. Okay, and then grabbing some white. And just going back through here with that light white right along that edge. highlight the edge like that it pushes it forward so it pulls it forward there's a fold right here just noticed so and then take that darker color and come up underneath it and then that now it looks like it's folded over. Okay. 
Here we go. Just like that. Grab some of that darker color. Let's go ahead and fill in this center area here with all this dark orange. There's my stomach still. Sorry. My stomach is singing the song of its peoples. That's uh, it's not venom, is it? It's not what? Venom? No. Okay, just make sure. That's true, we just watched that, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, I had never actually heard of that before. Me neither. There's so many comic book characters out there that we've never heard of. There's just... I'm not comic book followers. All right. But if it wasn't for all these sci-fi adventure movies, I would never know that there were so many good-looking scientists and <laughs> and stuff like that. It's a, you went into the wrong field is what you're saying? Well, you know, there's like supermodels first, then scientist second, <laughs> if you're a really good-looking person. Right. Those are the two career choices. So right. always, yeah, it's so weird, you know, how like all of the people in the movies are like young, like 30 somethings, really good looking people yeah. always, you know, yeah. I don't know where they put all the. So career day at school is like, okay, oh, you're good looking. Okay. Well, here's your two career choices. <laughs> movie was that it was meg yeah the meg because it was like it was, we just started laughing after a while because every time they introduced a new female scientist character she was just like some smoking hot girl or some guy yeah. took off his shirt right yeah yeah you're like okay this is somewhat re unrealistic probably but maybe i don't know maybe no, the, we the, the, the giant shark maybe we just don't know that's believable right it wasn't yeah right. exactly they had us up until the, <laughs> the main characters. We were believing it until <laughs> until they started showing all these hot people being scientists. And we're like, nope, nope, you lost us. Yeah. This is not real. Not, that doesn't happen. Nope. <laughs> Good point, honey. I didn't really think about that. You're right. <laughs> all right. This is the stuff we talk about, guys. Sorry. <laughs> This is this is a glimpse into the life, life. life of Mark and Angela, the things we like to joke about. So I apologize ahead of time if you were just here to watch the painting. Cause yeah. <laughs> Warning, random talk will happen. <laughs> exactly. Because that's who we just, are. We should, put, should, we should put that in the, in the beginning of the shows. Disclaimers. Just, disclaimer. <laughs> if, you just, don't, if you don't like breathing... <laughs> if you don't like <laughs> men talking, yeah, <laughs> this video is not for you. <laughs> that is so true. I cannot tell you how many comments I get. I was like, that, why is that man talking to you? So many comments about that. Angela replies, I asked the same thing. <laughs> it keeps showing up. It's kind of creepy. I'm painting and all of a sudden he comes in and just starts talking. I'm like, what the heck? Oh my gosh. Hey, it's, we're not for everybody. That's all That's all I'm saying, and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. We do we, you do you. Well, hopefully. Yep, some people like chocolate, some people like vanilla. Exactly. Some There's people something like, out there for everybody. Some people like dark chocolate, and others like that other kind of chocolate. Crappy that, stuff. That exists. <laughs> Sorry, Mona. <laughs> hey, at least she sends us the she, good stuff. She sends us the right she stuff, knows. yeah. She knows. I think she's just trying to get it out of her country. <laughs> <laughs> One bar at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. For 
those who don't know, Mona is one of our moderators here during the show. She's been with us for years now. She's awesome. She's from Sweden. So every now and then we get little care packages from her, which I always love. And uh, she sends us chocolate. <laughs> so, as well as the little bird that's sitting on my mic right now. <laughs> little bird clippy. All kinds of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Shout out to all my mods because they help me so much. I cannot tell you. they Those ladies pretty much run the Facebook group for me because I, now that I'm doing Patreon and other all these other things, I just have not had time to go, you know, I don't have time to go in there as much as I would like and they are so wonderful. So I appreciate them. So finishing up here, just with this white. This one is a little trickier because it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. All the petals are kind of overlapping in the same spot and they're not very much color difference between some of them. So grab some light color. There's a really bright part right here that is folded down. So we'll do that little section. And then right along here, there's a really bright petal. Going a little bit darker right up there. sure that my brush strokes go in the right direction there. Okay. So just go a little bit lighter on this little fold over right here. And then there's a couple little spots here that I can tap in some highlights. I can't tell. I think it's this petal here. This petal right here is folded back. I think it's goes. I'm just going to darken up that line so that I can see it a little bit. There we go. So I think it's pointing straight up at us, so we're just seeing the very tip of it right here. reminds me of that uh, the peony that we did it's pretty pretty similar the peony was like a brighter pink color but this one is kind of a similar structure to the petals all these kind of wavy folded petals much much more I did a red poppy and but it didn't have nearly as many petals in it it's, it was a little bit smaller a little bit easier so if you're I think this one's probably about the same difficulty as like the red rose and the peony were so it's going to be a one of the harder ones of the of this series I have several flowers over a dozen now I think maybe 13 14 different flowers in this large flower series that we've done 
over this last few years here. And um, just really fun. I see people um, sharing pictures with me where they've done all of them and they have like a whole wall of these flower pictures, which they're just so cool. So cool. So. All right, so that petal is pretty light all the way through. There's a few little streaks, so I'm just going to kind of start from here and pull up a few little streaks that way. And then this petal here, tucked in. About an hour, that's not too bad actually. I'm getting pretty, making pretty good time on this one. Doing it on a smaller canvas this helps too. Although this would look amazing on a huge canvas. Oh my gosh. It would be so pretty on like a big 30 by 30 or something canvas. So pretty. 30 what? Inch. Okay. a little bit of the glazing liquid with this and just come back in here. Pulling some of that color out. Right, let's get some of that kind of medium. This one is meeting up with this one. I'm going to get a little bit of my white and just kind of go along that edge. Get a little bit of the darker color and pull back over that edge. Oh, my stomach. Oh, my golly. Unbelievable. I'm so sorry. I don't know what is going on with my stomach today. Well, I had to cancel my Thursday thing this week because my stomach's been off, so just may still not be quite 100%. today. <laughs> mm. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't. I don't know what's going on with my stomach. It's it's not hurting. It's just making all kinds of noises. <laughs> the, that hilarious. last one was perfect because it was quiet all the time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I swear, it's like, and I don't even feel them coming on, so I can't, like, go cut the mic. You know, they just, like, <laughs> hey, I guess it could be worse. If it yeah. Could, it could be, be other noises. Uh, other so. sounds coming yeah, from other exactly. places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to complain too much, but shoot. That's hilarious. I remember you had your stomach doing that if you, I can't remember when. It was a while back, I think, but. I remember yours doing that one during one of the shows, too. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Oh, the joys of live streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Never know what you're going to get. I don't paint these ahead of time, so I, you know. I, what I do is I sit down. This may sound weird because I'm not like a big, like, visualize the life that you want to see. But, you know, I do visualize the uh, painting process before. And I find that it helps me relax and uh, kind of um, be able to teach a little bit smoother if I do that ahead of time. So really started to, even if it's something that I think is going to be easy, because um, there's been times where, you know, I've like had paintings where I thought that it would be easy and and uh, kind of not done that, you know, just kind of jumped in and painted without really kind of pre-planning sort of what I was going to do, the steps and things, and... Uh, doesn't it doesn't go as smoothly. I always have a lot more stress when I when I haven't kind of thought through my methods here, so or at least kind of figured out what colors I'm gonna put where and you know, that kind of thing. It helps. Okay, going through here and just emphasizing some of these areas where the color is changing from one petal to another. I'm noticing this petal here has got some areas where it's folded forward. Right there. Okay, so we've got all of our petals in now so now I just want to go back through here and start to especially like some of these first ones we did out here are way darker so like this one here we need to add some of the lighter color so grab some of that white a little bit of the glazing liquid and I'm just going to start from this edge here And this time I'm going to just kind of flick over the top of what leave some streaking and then I'm going to grab my darker color and the kind of the middle color and come back and forth over this blend it in a little bit right there I 
Danke. Ja. Get my dark color and kind of come from the dark area and kind of gently blend out this way. Just soften it so there's just kind of like this soft streaking of these colors meeting. I can kind of use the tip of my brush to sort of run it through and add these sort of lines to it. There we go, like that. Let's do this one. Get some of this lighter color. And you may not have to do this. If you like what you've already done, don't do this. You know, these, these finishing steps are pretty much just dependent on what yours looks like. So if you did yours, you know, if you did yours like some of these, I'm probably not even gonna really mess with because I got the values pretty close on the first try. Um, but if you, you know, if you didn't go quite dark enough or quite light enough on your first layer, then go and do this and just add, add some color over the top. See that? Grabbing some of the brighter color here. Really bright right there. Then there's an area right in here that's fairly light. And using the edge of my brush to kind of pull lines. Pull some kind of streaks through there. And if it's too much, you can go back in with your darker color and soften it up if you need to. I think that's looking pretty good. Grabbing some of the darker color here and adding some of that. It's kind of the opposite over here. I did a little bit lighter than I did over here. So over here, we're going to be adding a darker color in, in some areas. If it's not blending, grab a little bit of the glazing liquid and some of your lighter color, your original color, or get it as close as you can to it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And just blend over those edges.
Okay. Let's grab my more of my lighter color here. Go back in through here. Add some of it, a second coat. Right in through here. Just more for their money. What? They're just getting more for their money. Yep. <laughs> they're free video. Oh, they're free? <laughs> this amazing tutorial is free? It is. It is. Zero dollars? Zero dollars. That's a pretty good price. <laughs> darker color and just kind of blend them back over. Just that kind of play back and forth until you get the color that you want. Alright, so pretty happy with that. Probably going to go in with just some really bright Mostly cadmium red light. And just add a little bit of it in just a few little areas here. So it's just kind of floating that thinned out color just along there. And then I can wipe it out and just kind of pull it out a little bit if I want to. Okay, 
it's just another little detail here. You could use burnt sienna if you don't have this color. It's very similar kind of to undertones to burnt sienna. So it's just transparent, so it makes better glazes. So that's why I'm using it here. And by glazes, I just mean these thin washes of color that were going over the top. our under layers it's transparent so you're seeing the colors underneath of that we've already done it's just going to change the tone just a little bit darken it up if we need to See how it's kind of shadowing this back end of it here just a little bit. It's very subtle. Pull up into that. Switch to my number and my quarter inch angle brush now. I'm going to start putting my black in here. And I'm going to add a little bit of purple to it just so it's got a little bit of color. And so it's right in here, and the edges are kind of fuzzy, so I'm just going to use that edge of my brush to sort of tap it outwards. Right up to edge of my petal there and tap it again this direction. There's another section right here. Big one right here that goes all the way up to here. It comes around and makes this kind of teardrop shape. We got a question. Yes. They would like to know if tapping like that causes your brush to fray. Yeah, it does a little bit at the edge, so it gives it kind of that fuzzier look. If I wanted to, um, I could I could keep it. Um, tighter if I just um, was a little bit more careful with my placement because I'm but because I'm kind of pushing a little bit harder it's flaring out a little bit more so I'm going to go ahead and bring it down even though the, all that's going to be covered up um. 
This one's kind of meeting up with this one where it kind of comes down like that. Kind of flick it out to get these kind of lines. And there's a little bit right here. Same thing. I'm going to get up in there and just use the tip of my brush to draw out some lines. And I think that's about it. glazing liquid and get some of this reddish color kind of quinacridone magenta here mixed with it a little bit of the red kind of transparent color and just kind of go along those edges of that black and just kind of Soften them up just a little bit so they're not so like harsh because they're pretty like in your face black. So just kind of softening up the transition between that really, really dark and the lighter colors. All right. Go a little bit wider with this one. stomach. What? Gummy bears. <laughs> good. Good, good. Do you have gummy bears over there? Is that what you're... I'm going to go get some, so. Okay. We'll go do it. It's for me, right? You're doing it for me. Yeah, it's like a medicine. <laughs> I've got some burnt umber here. I've added a little bit of blue. And I'm going to just dab in here the center of this flower the darker color to my
Okay. That's definitely going to help. Thank you. A green one, too? Okay. We'll play some around here for you. <laughs> Ooh, a, a white clear one there. Ooh. I think those are pineapple. There you go. There you go. Give me the whole rainbow, huh? So, I'm going through here and just... If you need to, you can... Go back over any edges. Got a question about when you rinse off your brushes. Yeah. Are you rubbing them against the bottom or the edges or anything? Or Yeah, I'm rubbing it against the side there. Side of the cup. Going back in here with some of this orange from the background color. I just wanted some of that color right there. And then... This orange is not too far off from the... from the unbleached titanium too, so you could have done your background with the unbleached titanium if you wanted to. Um... Yes, though, I do do it against the side of my cup to try to get it. But I know it's not clean all the way, so you're going to have to be sure that you're washing your brush out. And then, and don't let it dry like I put my my angle brush that I was using earlier sitting off to the side here, but I'm keeping it wet because I know it's not clean yet. Even, even if it looks like it's clean, um... That paint's hiding in there. It's waiting to dry up and ruin your brush. So you don't want it to be allowed to do that. And now we can hear birds in the background, too. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of noises today. Surprised Cashmere's not in here meowing for us, too, adding to the noise. She's at the babysitter's. That's right. She's Spencer's. Spencer's going to be starting his ACT uh, tutoring on Tuesday nights during our show, so we're not going to have a babysitter a cat sitter anymore. Although, I guess... Oh, yes, we will. Courtney's going to be here, so there we go. Just tell her to... She can watch all the animals. Well... <laughs> and the baby. <laughs> she got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. Cashmere... Is has been Cashmere is our indoor kitty and she likes to come in here during the show and meow and get on Mark's lap and get in his way and except for she just she just lazes around and I took a picture of her she sits in Mark's chair when he's not with me you know during this during the week if I'm in my studio she'll be in here with me and hanging out on his chair but she's she doesn't remember to turn my mic on when I need it. So I'm going to keep you around, I think. <laughs> and she doesn't bring you gummy bears. Exactly.
just trying to add some streaking and sort of making sure that I have some like directional lines in some of these areas where there's just long unbroken color. Just re-emphasizing these darker areas, kind of right up against these light areas that'll help push those petals forward a little bit. It's a little bit of burnt umber here. I'm just going to kind of flick some darker shadows right in there. Give a little bit more depth right there. Let's go right up to that black right there so we know that this is part of that. Okay, I'm going to grab that purple now and some of the quinacridone magenta. gotta add white to purple because it's so dark otherwise it just you won't even see it let me see what it looks like if I add a little bit of the burnt orange to my purple going to grab a little bit of the purple. So I have both in my brush. I have that darker purple and then the lighter violet. And I'm going to go right along here. And I'm going to tap right up next to my Center there. You zoomed way in, didn't you? I did. 
some of these areas are going to be a little bit tight, so. And at first it may not show up very much, but that's fine. We'll, it'll, we'll get it there. Don't worry about it if it goes over the green area because we'll be fixing that up. Okay, now I'm going to grab some more white. And I actually want to mix up some burnt umber or some ultramarine blue with my white too and have like a light ultramarine blue and some of that. There we go. Ooh, look at that color. Now I'm going to go around. Here I'm going to try to make sure that I have my line separated just a little bit so you can see that they're radiating out from that center. And I'm turning my brush so that I'm always getting that, keeping that center in focus. And I'm going right over the top of this. This petal is going to have to be put back in, so that's fine. Probably this one too, so I'm just going to do over the top and not worry about it. And then we'll put it back in later. Because otherwise we're just going to be too difficult. Alright, so that's too blue right now. So we're just going to let that set for a minute. Kind of purpley. I want more magenta, so I'm going to take my magenta and some of my glazing liquid. I'm just going to go over the top once that's dry. Do that. So I'm not doing anything but just adding color on top of this. And I'm not going all the way to the edge because I want these ends to stay kind of purpley colored, purpley blue. color and I'm gonna go over and add some more highlights right along those edges just sitting my brush down and pulling just slightly towards the center and if you are having trouble using the angle brush for this you can always switch to a liner brush or smaller brush so just use whatever brush you're comfortable using it does not have to be the same as what i'm using and really i'm kind of making these a little too perfectly spaced i'm noticing in my picture that they're kind of turned in a different direction so i'm going to kind of go in here and muss these up a little bit and move some around so they're not quite all perfectly lined up the way i did it Okay. So the main thing is I just want it really dark right here, right around the edge of my center. So I can go back in here now, grabbing some of the lighter, some yellow, and unbleached titanium here. A little tiny bit of green. And I've kind of mixed it in with that that uh,
color that was there before the this color that we first put on sorry I'm getting toward the end here I'm having trouble with my words that's okay <laughs> So let's switch to a little bit smaller brush. I think I'm going to use the number four round here. And so grabbing this greenish yellow here, and I'm going to add some white to it just to brighten it up. I want it to be fairly light. And I'm just going to dab along that edge, and it's not perfectly straight, so I'm just kind of dabbing along the edge and kind of pulling it towards the center a little bit. to pick up your painting and turn it like that? Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> Going around from the center a little bit. All right, and then I want a little bit of the brighter yellow. And I'm just going to kind of streak a few little Here he is there with a little bit of the brighter yellow. Need a little bit of burnt sienna with that green there. And just kind of go around. It's kind of got like a shadow around it a little bit. And then just sort of add a little bit of this color in between some of these bits here. And then go over, kind of blend that out. I don't want it to look like it's a circle there. Just kind of blend it out so that it's softened up. There we go. Like that. Grabbing some brighter yellow. And I'm going to make these little pod things coming out the center. I'm not really sure what they are, but just little thingies emerging from the center of the flower. <laughs> Leave a little bit of that dark color in the middle. And we can use a little bit of the burnt sienna, a little bit of the green there, that kind of color that we used before to kind of shadow some of these if we need to. Darkening up that center just a little bit more. Okay. And then adding, just grabbing that white. A little bit of the yellow. Highlighting over the top. And then going back in with that yellow. Okay. And I'm going to grab to my number one round now. magenta color that violet and just All right. I don't know how to percent color 
color I wanted, but I don't know what's, what else to do with it, so I'm just going to let it go. Um, grabbing some of that yellow, cadmium yellow light, or medium, a little bit of white. I'm just going to use my brush to kind of dab on these random shaped little pods. And they're going in all different directions. Just make sure they're crisscrossing and if you need to you can add a little bit of yellow oxide with burnt sienna here on a few of them to darken them up so there's like darker ones mixed in with the lighter ones there. And make sure these are opaque. So if you can see that purple through, you're going to have to do it twice. So just make sure you're putting these on thick enough so that you're not seeing that purple through them. You should, they should be solid. And sometimes they're just little dots and sometimes they're kind of lines. So I'm going to vary it up. I'm going right over that that outside edge of that purple, the purple flowers or purple section there. Adding some green. Making a very light greenish white color here and I'm going to just kind of go back over some of these areas where I want a little bit more brightness. Grabbing that bright cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow medium here. I've got my angle brush this time. I'm just going to go back over some of these areas. And the first time we had white with it, so now we can go back over some of those white ones and add this really bright pop of yellow. 
There's a few of them. You can use your smaller brush if it if it's hard to get in these little spots here with this. a little bit of the burnt umber with my green. I'm going to use it to shadow. I'm just glazing this a little bit on this center area. I just feel like it's too white. Did you notice how that gummy bear worked? <laughs> it did. You're right. It did. My stomach's not growling anymore. I'm <laughs> just saying. That's a miracle. Thank you, honey. The gummy bear diet. It's healthy. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so weird. Totally did work. Unbleached titanium with that gray green color that I put on there. I'm just going to go around my center. I know I've pretty much covered up everything that I already put on here. Just been trying to kind of get it where I want it. Add a little bit of yellow.
And I'm going back in with that white. One more time. If you did this right the first time, just leave it. I'm I'm just fiddling with mine to get it kind of looking better. Okay, so going back in with my white here. Making some more of that purple color that's in the center. And I'm just going to kind of shadow up on this just a little bit around the sides. Pull a little bit of this color. Glaze over the edge of the... need a little glazing around the edge to kind of soften that edge up. It was just a little too harsh. All right, go ahead and zoom back out there and see what we got here. good I think we're a little bit dark on this still so what I think I'm going to do is or I mean bright I think what I'm going to do is let that dry and then glaze over that whole center area because I think it's just in general just a little too bright so we'll let it dry and we'll work on this petal here and then we'll come back to it so I'm going to grab some white and mix it in with my pink that's over here I want this fairly bright though. And just go over our lines there in the center. Same thing here. Kind of lost that edge came right over our flowers. Or... Just making sure that that is. edge here has got a lot of little wiggles that we don't have in here so let's put those in
and use white to make your paint more opaque if it's not covering well. Just add a little white and it'll cover better. Trying to see what color I should use for my glazing. I think I'm gonna just gonna use gray. I'm gonna use a little bit of blue, a little bit of burnt umber, make a like a light blue gray. My glazing liquid here. Keep it fairly light. I don't think I want to go really dark with this, but I do need to like darken up this center here. So I'm just going to kind of tap over my areas in the middle here where I have my flower petals there. It's going to be very subtle, but I think it'll help kind of push everything back. This is still kind of wet, so I'm going to have to be really careful. all kind of blurring together because it's still wet. There's a the cat. Unbelievable. stomach and the neighbors and the cat. It's been an interesting show for noises today. <laughs> You're just over there laughing. <laughs> hey, why not, right? <laughs> All right, I'm going to make a little bit lighter version of that center color here, and I'm just going to add a few little Streaks. That's better. I think, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I can. In that center, it's a little bit less harsh. And I feel like I need to make that center a little smaller. I just feel like it's a little bit big. You can't see this purple around it. So I'm just going to kind of go around and clean up that edge here. Bring it in just slightly. a little bit. All these little edges that I want really bright. I'm mixing a little bit of the pink in there so it's not pure white.
There's little wrinkles in here that I need to add, so I'm just gonna, gonna glaze in some little details. It's just a matter of like small, small edits, adding some streaks in here. A bit of the lighter color coming down from this one here. Then that darker color just coming back up this way. softer color in this one. These are just very small little changes. So like I said, you can stop at any point where you're just happy with what yours looks like. changes that I want to make to mine. bright right there. I'm 
I'm just looking at my picture to see where the brightest, brightest areas are. And I'm going to punch up those colors with some of this really bright white. Now I've got all these other colors in my brush still, so it's not going to, it's still not going to be pure white, but it will really brighten up. But I'm not mixing it in. I'm just kind of laying it on top of these other colors here. The white will kind of absorb the colors that are around it, so it's not going to be pure white. I get this done all I'm gonna have to do is go back around the outside with black outline it we'll be done some glazing liquid and kind of help this blend here. Get some of that darker color just to kind of go in the opposite direction there to tone that down. Blend in that light color there. Did you? Did I get it in there? Just a little bit. Good. Well, it wanted to be in there. That's what I figured. Alright, I think I'm going to call that good. Let me get my black out here and I'm going to just paint around the outside of my... It's a little bit dried up, so... Try to find some fresh paint underneath there. You could use it. I thought a blue would be pretty with this too. So if you wanted to, you could add, like we could add a little bit of that ultramarine blue in here with this while we're putting it on it and kind of soften up that black. 
make it more of like a Payne's Gray color. I'm going to use my fluid black though, because I think that'll make it a little bit easier to work with. about these golden fluid um, acrylics is that they are not thinned like when you add water to your uh, heavy body acrylics to thin them out it thins out the pigment but these fluid acrylics are thinned out but the pigment is still just as high as in the heavy body acrylics so you're actually getting the softer or the more fluid paint but without cutting the color at all or the saturation of the color so it's really nice as opposed to like craft acrylics that are like mostly filler and just a little bit of these are like a craft acrylic uh, f consistency but they're way higher quality. I'm just going in close here using the tip of this angle brush. And wiggling in. And then Thank you. And then smooth out any bumpy areas. Smooth out your little bumpies because you'll get little ridges. I'm adding little ruffles around the edges of these pe petals now, too. It's amazing how much it changes the look of the whole painting when you add this black, it just really makes it so much more striking. But as you said, they can leave it yellow. Yeah, you can leave it the orange. They can make it whatever color they want it to be. Absolutely. I wouldn't recommend the same color as a flower, but... Probably not. Any other color. <laughs> I would use a color that you've already got in your painting, though. So when, like, introduce a brand new blue or something that's really out there that's not in your painting already, that can be kind of jarring. So I would use a painting or a mixture that's from this palette. Or if you did use a blue that, you know, you don't have in the painting, I would add it somewhere in the painting to tie it together because you, you want to, you know, you don't want to have it just on the outside. It would look weird.
Interesting tip. I never thought of that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Like if you wanted a teal or something like that, I would use a, your phthalo green to mix it. Phthalo green and the ultramarine blue and mix a teal instead of using like the phthalo blue. Since we haven't used the phthalo blue anywhere in this painting, I wouldn't use it. my brush flat so I can get down in this little tight area right here. right to left again mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Oliver what are you doing I, I don't know the door was closed did you push the door did you figure out how to make the handle go Oliver meow what do you want just being all vocal Spencer's falling down on his kitty sitting duties. Cat sitting duties. This is literally every show anymore. I don't know what the deal is. They never used to do this when we had Scooter in the... Sh Maybe Scooter kind of policed it. We didn't know, but... They never came in here when Scooter was around. And Scooter never really made any noises. He was pretty good about being quiet during the shows. Let's get it with our dog that passed away. I miss him. He was my little studio buddy. I was just saying how it's so weird how now that Scooter's not in here, the cats think that they can, <laughs> you know, like they never used to do that. They never would come in here and mess around in the studio. Or even try to get in here. It's like so weird. It's just now all of a sudden. The both of them. Okay. Almost done. Oh, I love how this is looking. Isn't that pretty with the now that we're getting that black on there? So pretty. Oh, now I know what his problem is. What is it? There's a small thunderstorm headed this way. You can hear the rumble. Oh, he's feeling nervous. Cashmere's too dumb to be scared of thunderstorms. She doesn't even notice. But Oliver gets all freaked out. I took a picture, actually, last 4th of July of Oliver and Scooter side by side underneath the couch. <laughs> during the 4th of July in our neighborhood with all the fireworks going off. It was hilarious. The two of them hiding out together. <laughs> and Cashmere is just like, whatever. What's going on? Yeah. Why are you guys under there? I find this kind of relaxing, this part, you know, where you're kind of painting around it. It's just kind of, I don't know, something kind of therapeutic about it. It is a little bit like painting by numbers, you know, in a way, because you've got your line figured out. You're just kind of filling in around it. I don't know. It's 
So let's talk about if people can't draw. Ah, uh, yes. Or are afraid to draw, should I say. Yeah, if you don't want to try to attempt to draw this on your own, you can go to patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, and I will have a traceable, it'll probably be up later on today or tomorrow, first thing. Um, I do it from the original painting, so I digitally copy outline of this and post it on Patreon, so you can have the... Uh, you can transfer it onto your canvas and just go from there. And then you can just fill in the blanks. Super easy. So we kind of do do paint by numbers now that I think about it in a way. <laughs> in our own way. Uh, so, yeah. So if you are interested in that. And then we've also got other, you know, bonus materials and bonus videos and all kinds of fun stuff that we do. So if you want, if you do sign up, be sure that you, um, if you sign up for the $10 level, be sure that you actually request to join the Facebook group because I get a lot of people that sign up for it but then don't actually request. So you have to go and request to join the group. Otherwise, you don't get automatically added because I can't add you unless you're a friend on Facebook. So and I won't let you do that. We feel <laughs> obligated at this time of the month right. to remind everybody that Patreon works on a calendar month. Right. So from the first to the end. So today... On this video, it's the 27th of April. Right. So that means if you join today, you'll you pay be charged. A dollar. And then again on May 1st, right. you'll, you'll be charged pay a dollar again. And you, yeah, you get access for the right. 27th through the 30th of April. So and just a heads on May up. May 1st, you'll be charged again. Yeah. I mean, we'll, if you want to give us $10,000 today and $10,000 on well, the 1st, <laughs> I'm not going to say no. I mean, you be you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> but, you know, because we know that people have been caught off guard. It's not you know, right, 30 right. days of, of when you signed up. It's yeah, I wish it was, month. but it's not. So so I hold on control over that. a few more days. And on the first, if you join, then, you know, it's the whole month. And you can right. you can stop it at any time, but you still have access for that whole month. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Good point, honey. Um, I'm just going to keep on going around here. Might as well. And um, there was something I was going to say, and I forgot now. Oh, um, next week is uh, May, when, what is next week? May, May 4th? Next week, I think, is when we'll have our new uh, website up. So I'm really excited about that. So be watching for that, because I'm going to be posting, it's going to be different um, video that I, I don't normally post uploaded videos. You know, we usually do everything live and there are these tutorials. Well, this time I've made a video of the actual process of me making the the uh, website. So if you're interested in that and want to see that and check out my new website, it'll be up, I think, this Friday coming up. So um, be watching for that. But if you want to get notifications of my new videos, um, you can go to my channel and just click on my name uh, or my image down below this video It'll go to my channel homepage, and then you can click on the little, next to the subscribe button, there's a little bell. And if you click on that, it will notify you of new videos. So if you're interested in, you know, keeping up with all of our live shows and what we're doing, um, which we hope you are, and we hope you've already subscribed. If you haven't already, go ahead and do that too while you're at it. But um, it will um, let you know, you know, when that new video comes up. So it'll send you a reminder. And uh, then you won't miss any of the live shows, too. So yeah. we do, we're going to be on a regular schedule this month of uh, May, I think. I don't think we're going to miss any days this month. So at least we're not planning on it. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. And I'll have the new schedule up soon, too. I've been working on that. So that poll, whenever I get uh, probably this first part of next week, I'll be posting the new schedule so um mon uh, tuesday is our roses on our is our last video of april and it's it's already scheduled so it's going to be the roses the climbing roses on a fence it should be a lot of fun and uh then we'll have some new videos coming up in 
May, I think we're going to be painting a, possibly a raccoon, possibly Kayla Lily. Is that hail? Or just rain? Weird. Okay, let me turn this around here. Here, where did we go? This way. And then also, if you're wanting or needing new brushes, there's a link down below the video to the brush guys. Yep. Use uh, the uh, code Angela Fine Art. Get five percent off. Yes. And also links to the Amazon store where you can buy other supplies and goodies and whatnots. Not bad. We got pretty close to the original there. Yeah, that side looks by sweet. side. Looks pretty good. I think you know, we it probably could have gone a little bit more coral with it, like a little bit more reddish, but I, I like it. So To me, it was very pink uh -huh. before you painted the the background black. Really? It yeah, pink, I was like, yeah. wow, that's you know very pink, very different from, uh -huh. the, from the reference photo, but now uh -huh. it's almost right on there. Right. I thought that's uh, pretty cool. I'll zoom in just a little bit, get back. Yeah, if we want to, we could uh, we could go in and glaze a little bit of this uh, cadmium yellow light. If you want to punch up the oranginess of it and make it a little bit more orange. See how that works? So... Um, that's up to you. If you want it more kind of coral, orangey, less pink, you can add a little bit more of this cadmium red light. Just in some of our kind of shadow areas, darker areas. Yeah, I like that better. It's a little bit closer to the reference, so I'm going to just keep on, just do it over here too. I have very little cadmium red light in my glaze because it is an opaque color, so it can really take over really quickly. So just be careful when you're using it to glaze that you add a lot of the glazing liquid and just a tiny bit of paint. Tiniest little bit of paint. What are you looking for? My remote control. Mm. Oh, I think I I knocked over your your table earlier this week, so maybe on the ground by your feet somewhere. With my homemade nunchucks. Yes, and Karen sent you those. <laughs> Those are pretty sweet. I'm a little jealous. We need to do that. Ooh, super chat. What? Super, super chat time. Chat party. <laughs> Work elbow. <laughs> All righty. Wow. Yeah, so we had uh, three super chats today. Nice. Lots of super awesome chats, but sorry. Lots of awesome chats. Three super chats. Nice. The first one was from Susan. And she says, lovely painting, Angela. Oh, you keep you, the Susan. tutorial so organized. Thank to Mark and Mona, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thank Susan. You, Susan. Then the next one was from Leisha. And she says, just want you guys to know how much you are appreciated. Oh. My Saturdays are no longer lonely anymore. Oh. Such dedication and hard work every week, all year. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Wow. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Leisha. That makes me want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> thank you. That's great. And the last one was from Sherry. And she says, I just want to show my support. I am learning so much from you, Angela. Oh. I can't tell you how much I love your tutorials. Thank you for giving us your valuable time. Oh, thank you guys thank so you much. So That's much, so sweet. Thank you so much, and Leisha and Susan. 
We really appreciate you so much, so much. You don't even know. <laughs> well, I hope we say it enough, but to y'all and all that support us on Patreon, I'm blown away. I, I saw a channel the other day, and I was getting a little discouraged because he does similar stuff to us, and he has like 600,000 subscribers or something like that, and and... And I was, I don't know, it's, it's bad, it's always bad to compare yourself to other channels, but then I saw their Patreon and I was like, oh my gosh, we have so many people that really yeah, support us. We it's, do. It's amazing. I mean, we really, for a smaller channel like this, we are mm -hmm. very, very, very blessed. You yep. guys are really wonderful to us and we appreciate it so much. So, thank you so much and we, we, uh, we hope we say it enough. So, all right, we're going to be back on... Tuesday night. So hope to see you then for the roses on the fence. I think that'll be a really fun one. Hopefully not too long. And little Liam will be here. So maybe we'll hear him in the background. I was going to say, <laughs> maybe I have some, some help over here. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Tuesday night. <laughs> be grabbing all kinds of stuff over there. <laughs> all right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time. Bye.